Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to answer yes, no, not given questions. This type of question is common in the IELTS reading test, so there's a good chance you'll get one of these or a true, false, not given question, which is very similar. It's important that you understand the difference between the two. So to start, here's a quick explanation. The difference is in the type of information contained in the text. For yes, no, not given questions, the text will contain opinions, views or beliefs of the writer or other people who are mentioned. For true, false, not given questions, the text will contain factual information about a topic. Many students dread this type of question, for the reason I'll explain in a minute. However, if you learn the tips and practice the strategy on this video, your skill at answering them will improve, as will your confidence. Here's what I'll be covering in the video. An explanation of yes, no, not given questions. The big challenge. Eight top tips. The proven strategy and a step-by-step -step example and model answer. First, let's look at what you have to do for this type of question. You will be given a set of statements and a text, and you must decide which of the following applies to the information in each sentence. If it agrees with the views of the writer, the answer will be yes. If it disagrees or contradicts what the writer thinks, the answer will be no. If it's impossible to know what the writer's point of view is, the answer will be not given. Here's a set of sample instructions and questions from a real past IELTS reading test paper for illustration. So the two things you need to do are one, to understand the information in the statements and two, decide if it matches the information in the text, it disagrees with the information in the text or the information isn't given. The big challenge with yes, no, not given type questions is that for some statements, that is the not given ones, you'll be searching for information that's not there. This is the reason why some people dread them. You can easily waste a lot of time going over and over the text to check that you haven't missed the information. Hence, it's extra important to have a strategy that gives you the confidence to make your decision and move swiftly on. Now for my eight top tips. Tip one. The answers appear in the same order in the text as the order of the statements. This is not the case with some other types of questions, so it's an important thing to know. This information will help you to locate the answers. Tip two. You don't need to read the whole text. First, you'll scan for keywords, and then you'll read only the section containing them in detail, as this is where the answer will be. Tip three. There will be at least one of each answer type, that is, at least one yes answer, one no answer, and one not given answer. So, if you don't have at least one of each when you've completed the question, you've made a mistake. Tip four, watch out for distractors. Be aware that the test setters love to use distractors to really test you. A prime example is qualifying words such as every, all, some, most, a few, always, often, occasionally. These single words can completely change the meaning of a sentence. Compare these two sentences. Julio often goes to the gym after work. Julio occasionally goes to the gym after work. In the second sentence, just one word has been changed, but it gives it a very different meaning. In yes, no, not given questions, the meaning of the statement must be an exact match with the opinion of the writer for the answer to be yes. Tip five. Also be on the lookout for qualifying words that express possibility or doubt, such as seem, suggest, believe, claim, 
possibly, probably. Again, they can totally alter the meaning of a sentence. For example, he claimed that profits had gone up by 10%. He knew that profits had gone up by 10%. Now for the final three tips. Tip six, the view or opinion of the writer may not be immediately clear from the text. You may have to determine this through what they say. Tip seven, the statements will contain synonyms and paraphrasing, so be on the lookout for these. And tip eight, remember that at least one answer will be not given. This means that you will be searching for information that's not there. As already mentioned, it's easy to waste time searching and searching for information you're never going to find because it isn't included. Use the strategy I'm about to show you to quickly come to a decision about each statement and move on. Next, we come to the strategy for answering yes, no, not given questions. I'll quickly go through it, then I'll show you how to use it step by step. First, read the instructions carefully. Double check whether it's a yes, no, not given question or a true, false, not given question. Next, read the statements and try to understand the meaning of each. Do this before reading the text. Underline key words and have a quick think about possible synonyms of these that might appear in the text. Also note any qualifying words in the statements such as all, some, always or often. This will make your brain alert for them when you come to scan the text. Then reread statement one and scan the first paragraph, maybe two, for the key words or synonyms of them. Scanning will locate where the answer is, but detailed reading of this section of the text is now needed to decide if the specific information you're looking for is correct, incorrect or not given. As you read, remember to consider these three things. To be yes, the view of the writer must exactly match the statement, even if the words are different. Look carefully for qualifying words that might change the meaning. If you're struggling to find the writer's opinion, it's probably because it isn't there. That is, it's not given. Repeat this whole process for the remaining questions. Now for our practice question. This example is not from a real IELTS reading test paper. I created it myself to demonstrate the strategy I've just outlined and to give you an opportunity to practice it. The text in your test will be longer and may have five or six statements. Here are the instructions and statements. The next two slides contain the text. I've had to divide it due to lack of space. However, I created PDFs of both instructions and statements and the text that you can download to make them easier to work on. You'll find the link to them in the notes below this video. Here's the text. Don't read it yet. Remember, we need to do some work on the statements first. We'll come back to the text in a minute. So this is how I answered the question, my step-by-step -step strategy. Having read the instructions and tried to understand the meaning of the statements, I now focus in on the first statement, which is, viewing an electronic screen before going to sleep at night is harmful. The key words I select to scan for are screen and harmful, although I'll be looking out for synonyms as well. I scan the first paragraph and easily find screen. Harmful isn't there, but I do spot damaging, which is a synonym. This shows me that I've found the section of the text where the answer is located. I read the statement again to get more detail. Before going to sleep at night is also an important phrase, so I scan for this. I don't see it, but just before bedtime means more or less the same thing. This suggests that the answer is in this statement. I now read the statement in detail. This statement clearly says that in the opinion of the authors of the study, 
Viewing an electronic screen before going to bed at night is not damaging. So, the answer is no. Next, I read the second statement and decide to scan for psychological science and computer. Again, watching out for synonyms, especially for computer, for which there are several possibilities. I continue scanning from the location of the last answer. Remember, the information will come in order in the text. Psychological science is at the beginning of the second paragraph, so this looks like the right section of the text for the answer. I don't find computer, but screen use and digital technologies are in the same sentence. Screen use is close enough to computer use, which is the phrase used in the statement, for the information to be a match. I now scan the sentence for the word teenagers to be sure that I have the correct location. I don't find it, but the synonym adolescent is there. Next, I read in detail for the answer. Once you know where it's located, it can often be a single word that leads you to the answer. Here, it's the word fails. Read in the context of this sentence, it tells me that psychological science fails to do what is stated in the statement. The answer must therefore be no. Paragraph 3, where I expect to find the next answer, is a long one, so I need to quickly find the section of text the answer is in to narrow down my search. I decide to scan for RCPCH to identify the correct paragraph and 60 minutes to locate the detail in the statement. I easily spot RCPCH, so quickly scan on for my second keyword, suspecting that a synonym might be used. I'm right and I spot one hour in the last sentence. I read the statement again and look for other words that might match words in this sentence. These should confirm that I found the sentence with the answer in. I match advice with the synonym recommend and electronic devices with screens. Leading up to bedtime is also a match for before bed. The text clearly agrees with the statement so I mark the answer yes. It's always helpful if there's a name in the statement as it will be easy to spot in the text. There's one in statement 4 so I immediately scan for it. Do be aware that a name may not match exactly. Just the last name might be used or the initial and last name or just the first name. Here the first name has been omitted in the statement. Having found the name and confirmed that I have the right paragraph, I then scan for the keyword violence or a synonym as this is a subject of the statement. Whilst I do find harmful content and dangerous content, which would include online violence, I find no specific reference to violence. I thus conclude that the answer is not given. And that's our question completed. I hope you found this strategy helpful. Now practice it with other yes, no, not given questions. Once you get the hang of answering them, you'll be able to tackle them with confidence. Thank you for watching and I look forward to helping you with another of the 12 types of reading questions soon. Bye for now.